finally got an all-wheel drive car uh, here on our Dynapack, and the good news is the uh, Model 3s work on the Dynapack, no problem. Um, so that was really great, we just unplugged a front wheel speed sensor and we were able to dyno it. Um, so we've had a rear wheel drive long range, and we've had a rear wheel drive standard range plus on the dyno, and we've done kind of a state of charge uh, comparison of, of the power at various charge levels with those two cars and now we've done it with this performance model 3 so as expected there's a much bigger drop off in power with the lower battery uh, because you're asking for so much power the lower the state of charges the greater the, the voltage sag is going to be and at some point you're going to get to a voltage where the inverter has to cut back power to protect uh, protect the battery so I'm not sure if we got down to that low with this one we only went down to 40 percent battery with this uh, with this testing today but even that showed an 80 horsepower difference uh, whereas I believe we were around 45 horsepower difference between those two uh, states of charge between 90 and 45 percent with the long range rear wheel drive car so really big difference and one thing we noticed as well uh, was there is a huge drop off in power when you start going below 75% battery. Um, between 75% to 95% really isn't that big. So we'll pull that up here. The graph that you're looking at right now is showing 95% battery charge in solid. So that's 465 horsepower <clears throat> at the wheels and 45% battery charge is the dashed lines and that's 383 horsepower. So pretty significant power difference from 45 to 95% power. And we have here 75%. And you can see here 95 is the solid red, 90 is the dashed green, and 75 is the dashed Red. So there's not a huge drop off in power, especially from 95 to 90 is almost no difference. And then from 90 to 75, there is a difference, you know, 15 horsepower or so, but it's not, it's not gigantic. Um, and then once you start going below that, the power starts to really drop off. Now with this car, we were at the limit of the front dyno pods because these dyno pods can only handle 2000 Newton meters of torque. So if we bring that up here, you can see the torque split of the motor. So on every pull, I had to pedal it uh, until we got kind of into field weakening when the motor hits this knee. And the, this is the purple here, the, is the front torque, and that's over 2,000 Newton meters. So the limit's 2,000, and we're at 2,082. So we're right at the brink of, of tripping the... Uh, the red screen of death on the dyno here. So most likely, you know, there's a bit more torque down there. It's hard to say exactly how much, but my foot was pretty close to, to 100%, maybe 90%. So there's probably another little bit of torque down low, but it's interesting to note that there's about a uh, 60-40 split, roughly, with the rear motor having 3850 newton meters and the front motor having just shy of 2100 newton meters of torque and then at higher speed that difference you got 1700 newton meters in the rear and a thousand in the front so pretty pretty decent torque bias uh, and that's with the dyno who knows how it is on the, on the racetrack under varying track conditions we have seen under cornering that the front motor will be totally limited by inside tire spin, so you won't get full power unless you stop that inside tire spin from happening. Uh, so by straightening out the wheel uh, when you're on the racetrack, for example. So yeah, pretty much what we expected. Um, lots of power, and because of that, lots of losses when the battery's not fully charged. And uh, I think that's about it. Jess, you got anything else you want to say? You jealous? <laughs> Oh, you mean because that uh, at top speed it still makes more power than my car? At top speed it still makes more power than my car too. Oh, jeez. Yeah. We can also overlay here the 
long range car versus the performance model 3 and you can pretty much see the uh, base speed obviously happens earlier because the battery is under more load and there's a difference of about 150 odd horsepower it closes up a bit <clears throat> up top but it's still what do we have here 260 to 375, so about 115 horsepower at 10,000 RPM. Closes up a little bit, but yeah, that's a big, big chunk of power that uh, those rear-wheel drive cars are, are missing out on. All right, so here's an interesting overlay that we have. This is the solid line is the rear-wheel drive long-range car with the same battery pack at 95 percent, and the dashed line is this performance car at 95% battery, so same battery and we can see here the torque being produced by the rear motor so it's identical. So the yellow line is the torque by, absorbed by the rear pods and you can see 38.63 newton meters and 38.42 newton meters so you know within 1% pretty well uh, up until field weakening occurs. So they're you know very very much the same Maybe for some reason the long range car dropped into field weakening a little bit earlier um, than this one. And so maybe that was something to do with the battery temperature at that time, or it's just a, a software thing. But the limit of the inverter is, is, in other words, the rear wheel drive cars are running the same amount of current up until field weakening. Uh, it seems that's, that they're at the maximum there. Um, and all the additional power is just from the front motor on these performance cars.